Jennifer. So good to be here. Thanks to TechFest Northwest, Mark and Jane and Meg and Shauna in particular for inviting me to join you and give you an exclusive look at the Chasing Grace project. Um, how many of you uh, here consider yourselves women in tech? Awesome, I like that, that's great. How many of you have thought about leaving tech? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? I know a lot of women who have left and I know women who are thinking about leaving. But when I interviewed over 100 women last year, every single one told me, I wanna be here, I wanna build, I wanna innovate, and I wanna kick ass while I do it. And so that's what the Chasing Grace Project is about. It's a documentary series of six episodes. Each one tackles a different topic. Uh, we, we shoot every episode in a different city, and then we host the screening premiere event in the city where we shot. Portland was first. Um, has a little bit to do with the fact that I'm an Oregon native, grew up outside of Eugene. Logistically, it was easiest, but I really wanted to start here in my hometown. Um, and so we did that, and we premiered the episode about 10 days ago at the Hollywood Theater. Um, and today I'm gonna share an exclusive, abbreviated version of that episode with you. You can't see it anywhere else. They're not available online because we actually are in conversations with aggregators and distributors and they require that they not be widely available until we finish those conversations. So I hope that you enjoy getting kind of a, an exclusive look. Um, I do just wanna mention that the reason that we're, we're doing this project is because fewer women are choosing careers in tech than ever before and women leave tech at double the rate as men. And so that's a real issue, right? When we're building a future um, with things like artificial intelligence and deep learning and machine learning and we're teaching machines and software what to think and how to think and how to make decisions, it's really more important than ever that women are building, women and men together are building uh, those systems for the future. Otherwise, it will be more exclusive of a future than it is now. So that's why we're, what, why we're doing the project, is to recruit and retain female talent. We don't shy away from adversity. In fact, I really think it's important to confront the adversities women face for them to be seen and heard for their experiences. I don't think we can confront the things that are wrong until we, we sometimes hear those uncomfortable stories that inform solutions. So we also, though, share the stories of resilience and how women are rising above those adversities. Sure, they exist, but I, like I said, I've met with hundreds of women who are rising above to chart their own successful careers in tech. So I'm really, really excited about the project. Um, the first episode that you're gonna see an abbreviated version of is about the pay gap. We started there because pay is a key indicator of progress. Um, are women being paid dollar for dollar what men are being paid? And the answer is no. Um, and we hear from a couple women in the episode about their experiences with the pay gap, which is also timely. Uh, Tuesday is equal pay day. Uh, it marks the day into the year that women have to work to make what men made all of last year. So I'm really excited to share with you again an abbreviated exclusive look at episode one. Um, we'll go ahead and roll. My parents didn't want any Barbies in the house. They didn't want any dolls, really. They wanted us to build a lot, my sister and I. And so we always just built. My favorite toy was Legos. I've always played with Legos for my entire life, even as recently as last week. And I remember in kindergarten, there were some boys who told me that Legos weren't for girls, and I told on them immediately, and I was determined to play with Legos every day after that in kindergarten. And I think that's kind of defined my entire life. So working in tech has, uh, it's, it's helped me a ton. It's changed my life in the sense that I, um, I'm no longer living paycheck to paycheck. Um, I've doubled my salary in the last couple of years. I'm able to save money for college for my son that's a senior this year. And it feels awesome. Um, there's a lot of reasons why that feels good, but like just a level of security um, and things that I just never really thought that I would ever have. Women are excited by technology and are more empowered than ever. 
But the reality is they make just 80 cents for every dollar that a man makes. This is the pay gap. White women are losing about $500,000 over the course of their lifetime, over the course of their career. Women of color are losing $1 million, right? So it's more difficult to retire. So they might not feel the squeeze on their wallet right now, but by the end of their career, they're really at a disadvantage. When I was, what I felt like, at the top of my budding career, I discovered that a colleague was making 30% more than I was doing the exact same work. I've always run um, operations at startup companies. Um, all offers come through my desk. One day, an entry-level role came through, uh, and the salary was higher than mine. And I went from feeling at the top of my game to feeling devalued, inadequate, and completely ashamed. You feel like you are not valued at work because, well, you're sort of not, right? If your self-worth equals dollars, then you don't feel like you're being recognized at your job, that you are less than. It was absolutely not a possibility for me to confide in my boss for a number of reasons, but one primarily because they were friends. I asked to talk to my boss right away. We walked into a meeting room, and I just said, I cannot believe that you're going to pay him more than me. And he said he was going to work very hard, and I just said, fuck you, and walked out. The short-term impact was complete devastation. I channeled all of that into as much overdrive as I could. So in the short run, I joined every club I could possibly join. I was on a board at my company. I was desperately trying to absorb and learn and prove that I was worth that 30%. I started reaching out to friends to find out where they had been paid at. I wanted to prepare myself. I needed to be ready because he was gonna be ready. I walk into the office the next day and I know that he knows I'm upset. I slacked him and I asked him if, it was, if we could go for a walk and that I was ready to talk. Um, I instantly was offered a raise, um, which I was happy about. Um, and the conversation was just me talking to him about why, where I think he failed me there and why I think he did. So it took me five years of working hard, tirelessly to find myself in a different role at the same company where I finally had caught up with that salary. But by then, who knows how much he was making. I was five years behind him. On some level, I feel like I lost my youth. It was in my 20s at that point, when most people are spending time with their friends, going out. I look back on that time that I will never get ever again. So the risk of not achieving pay equity is really, we're losing money as an economy. If we had pay equality, we're adding $540 billion to the GDP annually. Right? If we pay women equally, you're probably reducing attrition. Very expensive for a company to lose you. Right? If we give women raises, we're cutting the poverty rate for women in half. It is just so wild to me that we don't see the economic benefit of paying genders equally. That's actually what drives me nuts, is that we're hurting ourselves. Right? This isn't just about, you know, it's unfair for women, it's unjust. It's just economically stupid. The way to close the gender gap is blind hiring. It's blind resume looking at. It's, if you are biased, make it more blind for you. Like, notice that in yourself and own that. It's also the responsibility of every single person to make sure that everyone's getting paid fairly. If you know that you are gonna hire a woman who's not gonna ask for more money, don't lowball her. Give her the fair pay. You know what it is. And maybe we need full reporting. Maybe it needs to be regulated, but maybe we could all just do it. And it doesn't have to be regulated. As difficult as it can be to speak up or stand up for yourself, you know, if you remember that you're doing it for somebody else, right? Whether it's the woman, you know, sitting next to you in a cubicle, or you're doing it for your mom, um, you mean you're closing the gap for them. I hope my sons are proud of me. Um, I hope that they see that I'm taking a stand for not just them, but it's also for the, their friends and their, you know, their peers. 
The ultimate goal for me is to continue to grow, to continue to learn. I have so much more work to do. I have so much more work to do, but you know what? Like I'm here, I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna keep fighting because I've earned this and I love it. Like I'm here, I'm alive. I've never felt more myself. I've never felt like it was okay to be myself. I'm not gonna let anybody take that from me and I'm gonna be a fucking CEO someday. There is a little girl who has no idea what pay gap means, who never knew there even was a ceiling. She blooms strong towards sky from the seeds of a million zeros and ones planted by the women who came before, who dared to speak out, who dared to build, who said enough. We are necessary. We are not going anywhere. We will plant and till and grow for generations of girls to harvest equality. We are sunlight on every dark corner. Progress travels at the speed of together. Don't call us brave. Call us the motherboard of tomorrow. Thank you. Am I on? Yeah. Thank you so much. What'd you think? Yeah? Awesome. Awesome. Um, like I said, that's an abbreviated version of the episode. In the episode, we go into more detail. And certainly, if you recognize the faces, they're Farah, of course, Megan Bigelow, who's here uh, as well. They've got amazing stories to share, as do the other women who are in the, the longer episodes. So uh, seek them out. Visit our website at chasinggracefilm.com to learn more about how the pay gap affects women and men um, and their desire to stay in tech. Um, I'll just finish by saying um, we're working on episode two now. Like I mentioned, we shoot every episode in a different city. We're on our way to Silicon Valley, where I spend a lot of time already in my day job, um, to shoot an episode about female founders in the VC community. So I'm interviewing now. If you have suggestions, I'd welcome them. And the, the documentary series is also 100% underwritten by sponsors. Intel, Red Hat, Cloud Foundry Foundation, Linux Foundation, PDX Wit, all have supported the project. Uh, we can't do the entire series without your help. So if you're interested in working with us on the project or supporting it, please get in touch. Thank you.